Well, I'd like just for the start of the taping, if you can just for the record, give your name, your position, and a little bit about your background, just so we can start off with the identification. Okay. Um, I am Dawn Mello, um, and I'm the president of Bergdorf Goodman. I had just returned to the store after an absence of five years, um, prior to which I was um, I, I was in the store, working in the store for, I'm trying to remember how many years now, 14 years, um, having had a succession of jobs, starting as fashion director and then moving to uh, executive vice president and then ultimately to president, a position that I held for five years before leaving to join Gucci. And um, what else can I say? Well, tell her a little bit about what you did at Gucci. You had, you had to recast Gucci. Yes. I was hired by Gucci to restore the image of that, that company, that brand at one time um, was known for. And that was a, a, a fine leather goods company that... Uh, also featured merchandise for uh, other categories of merchandise as well. But the image had slipped over the years um, and become um, downgraded due to a series of problems within the family. And um, so it had been some time since the brand was highly regarded. And I was asked to come and uh, redevelop the image in a more, in a modern way, and that is what I have been working on for the past five years, having developed left having developed a staff uh, who will continue this work. I decided to come back uh, home. And what do you see as being your main challenge now at Bergdorf, or your main goal? I think um, to maintain the, uh, the image of the, of the company. We have a very specific point of view in this store, and uh, my job is to make sure that we move into the millennium uh, with uh, everything necessary to protect that image and to take it further, perhaps. Can you talk a little bit about what the image is? By, in your own words? Well, I think that Bergdorf Goodman is perhaps a, um, a unique uh, retail operation in that it is a single store. Um, and, um, and singular. Pardon? Single and singular. <laughs> <laughs> yes, single and singular. And um, it uh, really is, appeals to consumer in the, truly the upper, uh, I would just say that, uh, upper. People of that point? Yeah. People of that point? Yeah. Money. A money mm -hmm. crowd. Yeah. And it, it's funny, it's, 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 it, it, that's something we don't hear anymore. We always talk about how people aren't spending uh, anymore, that people are um, uh, watching their money and that they're not spending and that luxury goods are, are not um, appropriate for this time. And, and uh, I disagree with that because there are, I think, in fact, that perhaps people uh, more than ever before are, are seeking value in their purchases. And, uh, is there a new definition of affluence? Well, perhaps uh, there is a new definition of, of affluence. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I, I, you have this on, so I, mm -hmm. I don't want to digress, but um, people are looking for um, products that last and that have staying power, mm -hmm. uh, and um, perhaps, um, well, 
I, I guess the thing is really <laughs> just let it flow. Let it flow. Uh, you know, this is a very, you know, the redefinition, you know, I know that you need money to shop in Virgo, mm -hmm. but it is also true, Dawn, that there are people who, as you just got through saying, have established certain priorities in their life, mm -hmm. and who make a decision to buy better, and to choose what they want to spend their money on, so that it isn't a question of their, you know, we used to say more taste than money, you know, you have... And then you said, you know, money and taste and so on and so forth. But the important thing is that there's a criteria uh, of value that's based on an edited selection of products in this store that brings you to it. Uh, and if you could only buy one thing, what one thing would you buy? Mm -hmm. And you make that decision. So I don't know that today it is only the affluent that shop. Yeah, that's and what I'm it. that's what I'm having a problem with here. I don't want to really say I want I to say really, that, but I don't want to say it in the Well then, then then talk about how mm -hmm. you feel about that because I first of all, how has it changed your point of view about the the, the 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 consumer marketplace that you left 5 years ago that you came back to now since you are now moving as she said the challenge is where will you take it? How do you see a store like this existing today with a whole new generation of consumers who have a different point of view about what you spend your money mm -hmm. on. Well, I, you know, I, I consider the store, the store's not on like a fashion magazine, um, and perhaps I'm the editor in chief. Um, no, no, that's that's what yes. I think we should be talking about. And um, we we have to edit or edit our assortments perhaps more carefully than ever before to appeal to the modern, the modern mm -hmm. generation of consumers um, who just don't buy for the sake of buying, but are more selective than mm -hmm. ever before. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, are looking for the unique um, and exciting uh, items and um, the, um, how can I say this? Um, well, I guess you know, that's really the unique and exciting items, uh, a new way to look, perhaps, mm -hmm. or to decorate their home. Yes. But isn't this then giving Bergdorf, from your point of view, and I know you did it at Gucci, and I think you should talk about that experience, because certainly you had to, to change the image of Gucci, you had to develop a whole cadre of creative people to develop product that would change mm -hmm. the image of Gucci again. Mm -hmm. And people waited for you to do that. And I would assume the same thing is going to happen oh, here. Oh, absolutely, that's true. And I think you should talk to that. Well, I, uh, that's true. I think that um, that uh, the success of, of this organization is the people within it. Um, an extraordinary group of creative people. Um, and um, my job is to develop uh, the talents uh, of those people along the way. Um, and um, so that's pretty much it. In the process to help them to work with resources that maybe also are covered in other stores, but to get for you a singular selection mm -hmm. of products. Is that true? Mm -hmm. um, yes, you, you think the exclusivity. The Not exclusivity as much as I think. I think, you know, well, obviously, you will you will reach for that when you can. But I would assume that you will be giving them an opportunity to work with resources in the development of unique products, as you said. If what if what consumers are coming to this, you said it before. You said it's a I think single I said store, it, didn't and I? it's singular. Well, if it's a singular store. It's going to have singular products. We're going to mm -hmm. come upon things that, number one, maybe we don't see in other stores because 
the presentation isn't as good, but also because there are there is the different eye, the edited eye that you have, you are going to urge your buyers to have or your merchants to have. Can't we just take ourselves? She's good, isn't she? <laughs> well, not only is she good, but she just has the words. Which, uh, oh no, you I'm, have. You, I'm so not, you, you have the words too. Um, I'm just urging you to, to to define the way you work because I know. Uh -huh. That's the way you, I mean, how do I know this? I've never because thought about it, you know, I've just never thought about the way I work, but that, you know, you've just said it, it's really to, um, to edit the assortment so that they have a specific appeal and you feel it's tailored toward the personality of this particular store. What's the personality of the store? Um, In terms of ad adjectives, for um, example. The store, the store really is, um, uh, it, it, it appeals to many customers. Mm -hmm. It has a rather broad range uh, from um, the young. Um, in fact, perhaps we have a younger customer than ever before as we move through the 90s um, to um, the ageless uh, man or woman of today uh, because people are, are more active than ever before as they as they age, and so uh, there's almost no age involved. But um, it's certainly not only the contemporary customer who shops at Burgers. Okay. Yeah. I like to think of Burgers as a sexy store, a store that's hot uh -huh. and um, with a buzz. That uh, yeah, a store with a buzz. That's exactly right. Um, and full of surprises, uh, the unexpected. At one point, uh, I remember putting John Paul Gauthier on the main floor, much to the shock of <laughs> some who felt that the store was, um, you know, the grand lady of retailing and so forth. Uh, that isn't really what we're about. We're modern. Um, hopefully sophisticated. I like the idea of glamour uh, associated with Bergdorf's. And um, as we go into the next seasons, we're going to concentrate on, on that. Uh, Some irreverent? But uh, not the retro glamour, but uh, the glamour that's associated with today. Some irreverent? Some irreverent. Room, room for irreverent? Oh, there's, uh, yes, there's always room for uh, irreverence um, and uh, our show this year will be Vivian Westwood for oh, example. Oh great, okay. It's uh, been our, hist it's been our um, experience that it, uh, if we do one show a year, one major uh, fashion show, it should be whoever is the name of the moment or um, the collection of the season, yes. the fall season usually. And this year we chose Vivian Westwood because we think that she's such an influence on fashion and uh, such an extraordinary uh, creator. Her, um, her hand is uh, unlike anyone else's. And she really is a couturier uh, and very people get to see these clothes because they're really, they haven't been well represented in New York City. So we will have a boutique for Vivian. She'll be here. The entire collection will be here. We hope to show it to the city. What, in September? Uh, yes, on September 13th. Should we cover that as part of our story, do you think? Yeah, I think that's great. Oh, yeah. Vivian's a genius. Well, I think yeah. maybe we ought to plan to cover that. We should talk with Rick. There will be photographs, That's obviously. Good idea. Mm -hmm. There'll be photographs, so maybe we. I wanted to do part. something with the school. I wanted to have the kids meet her. Oh, well, the we kids would worship her. Yeah. The kids we that. Just we could have an auditorium her. event. Mm -hmm. Would you like that? We could have an auditorium well, event. Well, I don't know that she. I hope she would have time to go there. That's the only thing. East Laurent, the only school he ever went to, yeah. was the college. We could, set up a, we could set up a. Either that or I was even thinking of having the kids come here. But I don't know how. If we can get her, she's very shy. All right. And, well, Elsa uh, came. Elsa came. And you know how shy she is. She gave me the most Elsa's brilliant ready. interview for my book on women designers. Yeah. Just brilliant. Oh, but, oh, but Elsa is, um, 
Oh, it's a very different type than uh, Miss. Right, Vivian well, sits with her head down. Well, She's Vivian. Vivian's more reticent than well, I. Well, she used to be a teacher, uh -huh. and I think uh -huh. I think the FIT students would bring her out of herself. I think so. Yeah, Valerie, maybe we ought to shop with the. Uh, we ought to set that up. Get get the, get the wheels going on it, at least. Uh, uh, and then, well, let me then you coach her. Out. Let me you check coach her and see if she's available yeah. to do this. But I think we should try to make that a little sequence. We should put story. definitely put yeah. it in the story, yes, because yeah. that shows mm -hmm. that it's not the grand dam, but this is something that is very modern and mm -hmm. very hip. Mm -hmm. The other thing we might do, because it's not just her speaking, it's the clothes that they have to see, which they won't see at FIT. But what we could do is invite the students to come up and see the windows as they're on the hill. Yeah. Gate rope off the street and have the kids, you know, able to come by, maybe at night or something, maybe you know. Can, and we could photograph that. And you could that's photograph that's them all. I mean, yeah. they all just that flip out one. over this. That would be one. Um, be one. But this would follow, because one of the things I'm going to give you when we leave here is uh, Dawn gave me a breakdown of the number of designers that, that have been here. And yes, the, that was my next question shows. about yeah. some of the designers yeah. who you think represent uh, mm -hmm. high points and aspects of Bergdorf's personality. Mm -hmm. Well, Bergdorf's, um, I don't know how much you know about the background of Bergdorf's and the fact that um, in 1975, when some of us joined the company and began to change the image from a re relatively conservative institution that had few customers under the age of 50, and contrary to uh, what most people think, um, did not really specialize in fine apparel. Um, and had absolutely no men's business at all. It was strictly for women, very much moderately priced, mm -hmm. uh, or certainly very conservative at the high price and uh, level. Um, and that had been not always the history of, of Burgess, but for the past, for the few years preceding that, um, that time. So what we intended to do was to, um, and maybe Steve told you this, to, uh, used to talk about the store being old, dull, expensive, and intimidating. And now it's young, um, uh, exciting, expensive, and intimidating. <laughs> um, you need some of that intimidating just to keep up the mystique, like yes. Paris. Right, that's exactly right. <laughs> but um, we... Um, we brought in, um, I'm trying to think now back to what we started with. Um, we brought in, well, at that point, the French designers really wouldn't sell us. They didn't want to sell Bertrand Goodman. They were already selling Bloomingdale's and Bonwit Teller, and uh, Henry Vendel was on 57th Street at the time. And uh, so we went to Italy, which was just emerging. That market was emerging as. A, um, a force, but really hadn't happened at, at this point. And we um, discovered Fendi and uh, Giorgio Armani and Crezia. And um, they, uh, we created boutiques for those collections. And at that point, the French decided that we were not so bad, and we brought in Yves Saint Laurent. Um, we discovered um, Claude Montana mm -hmm. and had several shows for him. Um, John Paul Gaultier, Issey Miyake, Romeo Gili are just some of the names that uh, became important to us. Then you did Chanel. Um, of course, Chanel. We were, I think, the first store in New York to have a Chanel boutique. Uh, long before Karl Lagerfeld uh, was at Chanel. Um, How long did you have the FBB? Um, 
Jeffrey Bean. Jeffrey Bean, absolutely. And I was just going to, I was separating the Americans. On the American uh, uh, scene, there was, of course, Jeffrey Bean had his first boutique here. And. Um, it goes back that far. That, that was in the late 70s, right. 70s 80s. Um, we, uh, we really convinced Donna Karen to open her own. Uh, a business under her own name. No easy feat. Don didn't think that she could possibly do it. She didn't think she could possibly leave Anne Klein. And uh, we convinced her to do that. And that today is a very big business for the store. Um, we convinced Calvin Klein to do a special couture line. I use the word couture because mm -hmm. it was really made in his workrooms. A collection exclusively from Bergdorf's. Um, we um, ha today have boutiques for uh, Dolce & Gabbana, um, Jill Sander. Yes. Boy, is she important. Yeah. Um, yes, extremely important. Uh, Chloe, uh, Gianfranco Ferre, um, Hervé Leger. Um, of course, Valentino, I had left out of that early yes. conversation. And, um, you know, and, and many, many more. Um, it's hard um, to pull dates out, but you said when you put Gautier on the first floor, do you remember approximately what year that was? Yes, uh, 19, about 1983. Yes, okay, that was a very great year mm -hmm. for him. I've just mm -hmm. been looking at some of okay. his 83, 84, uh -huh. Roxanne Lowett slides of those collections. Oh, yes, 83, 84. It was, it was a great year for him, and, and he, we had a, a, a terrific shop for men and women just at the foot of the escalator so that everyone who came down the escalator, 84, sorry about that, 84, because we opened the escalator. Um, they came down the escalator and landed in the shop. And um, so, what else can I tell you? Um, I'm thinking visuals mm -hmm. in terms of what you think are the important visuals, both of the store structure itself, the sort of environmental context. Maybe we do that first, and then also in terms of windows and displays. Mm -hmm. How do you see? Bergdorf being special and distinctive in that way, mm -hmm. or some high points? Um, at, at the time, just to, to uh, take it back a little bit, at, at, in 1975, um, the store had no escalators, and the three elevators that were on the 58th Street side were usually out of order. <laughs> and as we developed, began to develop the business, it was not unusual to have customers banging on the elevator door on the first floor when they were out. The elevators were inoperative. Oh, oh <laughs> so at least they were time, outside, not banging from the inside of no, the elevator. Was, no, outside. <laughs> well, sometimes they were also inside. When the, anyway, we put the escalators in in 19. We took a year to do it, 1983 was the year, and in 1984 we unveiled them, and that we were able to move people through the store. It made a, a, a great difference, and it also changed the um, architectural um, balance of the store. And we cre we began to create boutiques for our designers, a um, series of shops on just about every floor. We find that people like still really uh, appreciate the boutique yeah. complex and we will not move away from that because it gives people it gives a designer an identity and yes. we are a designer store uh, and uh, also people buy designer clothing for more than one reason not only for a name that they admire but also for fit purposes yes. and for um at this point of view, that's so comfortable for an individual, so that uh, it makes sense for us to continue to do that. 
Um, we added a home furnishings department uh, in 1985, and um, that has become a very important part of our business uh, and continues to grow and will be um, expanded even further in the future. Um, the Tell us about the customer. I'd love some view from you of the customer crossover between the women's, the men's, and the home. Is there any sense of how... Well, maybe we should talk about that. We have always had a small men's uh, menswear department, and we would like to think it was for the husband or boyfriend of our uh, customer, lady customers. The store had not sort of carried menswear other than ties up until... Um, 19, until we joined the company. And uh, uh, that business was small, but it was uh, well received by the community, and we understood that it could be much more important to us. So we made the decision to open a men's store, uh, which we did in, I guess that was 19. 80, 1990, in the fall of 1990. What did you have in mind then? What did you want? What, what, how did you see that man? Was that man someone that you saw did not have a place for himself in this city? Was this man somehow related to the kind of business that you were getting mm -hmm. from out of state? Uh, you know, what was your feeling about that? Well, we had a feeling that that men really did not have a place to shop in this, certainly in this uh, community, this part of, part of this neighborhood, um, that was a, to specialize uh, along the lines that the women's store is focused. And um, so that, that was the plan, to develop that business. So we um, we opened that store. It will be further expanded in 1996 as we de develop more space. And um, it is really the customer who is the, the husband or boyfriend of the woman who shops here. Um, is that what you're driving But at? now well, it is. Yeah, but I think it's even more. Don't you think it is, represents... Uh, uh, a cross section of men in this city who have evolved as style sensitive customers for themselves who aren't of the Paul Stewart. I see what you mean. You know what I'm talking about? In other words, that there's a high homosexual community. <laughs> well, um, I don't say that. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, we may as well say it. That means it, it began with them. There's a very well, I think it was black a, a black set of fashion sets the market. I don't know if those are, those men are shopping no. very dogs. No, mm -hmm. but there uh, certainly there are executive men who are not as confident as women have been, but know that they that women have had this kind of personal service uh, and uh, yeah, you know, I they think used to shop at Saks, but with a conservative approach. Bergdorf filled a completely new niche for mm -hmm. what I would say a hipper, a hipper man. He may have divorced. He may be onto his trophy wife. I don't know. But it was a new. It was a. It was a whole new. It was a whole new track for men. Uh -huh. I think. Uh huh. No. Yeah. Well, it certainly is. I think it's for a man who prefers to shop in a in a specialty store who has a um, let's just say a higher sense of style than. Um, Paul Stewart, for sure, or Brooks Brothers, and so forth. Um, however, a uh, majority of our, and, and the business has evolved, the majority, majority of our customers are um, probably more conservative than we expected them to be when yeah. we developed the, the store. We have now a very loyal um, group of customers in the store. The store is, is uh, doing very well, and um, we find that we're learning from our customers as to what their needs are. 
that is growing. That is mm -hmm. growing, and will. why do you think that man, that that great store from Boston, didn't make it here? I think the location was um, uh, a good part of the, their problem. Because they were trying to do really what, what, what yes. you and, and mm -hmm. are now doing. Well, I think that men have a different shopping pattern than uh, than women. Um, men. Um, like to feel comfortable with what they buy. They, they yeah. like the names that they know. Um, I talk to the salespeople very often in the men's store, and I like to hear how they respond. Um, men are comfortable. They want to wear this. They, they care very much about the, their fitter. Mm -hmm. um, they like to go back to the same salesman uh, all the time. Yeah. They are comfortable with names that they know and uh, much more brand conscious than women. They're not experimental uh, for the most part, the most part uh, except yeah. for the very young. And the very young do not come to Dorf Goodman uh, for trendy clothes. You're mm -hmm. and, and adore it. Mm -hmm. For just the reasons that you said, mm -hmm. that they it's almost as if they've traded up. And they wouldn't have been any place for them to trade up to mm -hmm. that they would have felt as right in. Mm -hmm. Their wives necessarily were not customers of Virgo, but they discovered Virgo on their own, mm -hmm. which is why I asked you if there was any crossover. I think there's, uh, there is there is definitely crossover, but I also think that there are a lot of men out there whose wives do not shop here in the house. Are there more men shopping alone in Virgo? Than, than, than was customary in, let's say, Saks, where women always went along with their husbands. No, oh, on weekends we see them shopping together. We do. Uh, during the week, it's, it's uh, primarily men. Mm -hmm. you want to talk a little bit about the home? Yes, the home um, has, has evolved also um, as uh, really a specialist, specialty home furnishings business, really. What started as a gift business has evolved as a specialty home furnishing business. Um, our customer now um, buys china and serious uh, uh, crystal uh, from, from the seventh floor. Um, lamps and pillows and uh, linens of all, all sorts. Um, antiques, uh, but the selectivity there is, is special. It is, for the most part, uh, ideas that are not available readily anywhere else in the city, or certainly not uh, to any great degree. And um, there's a, a lot of whimsy um, on the floor. The, um, Plus refined. Yes, it, it's from you get very a sense of refinement. Very, very uh, carefully edited assortment, and uh, the presentation is uh, residential. So you I have a feeling. Yeah, well, I love uh, that. In fact, I think the uh, feeling of the entire store is residential. When we began to nice way to describe. When we began to. Uh, develop our personality back in the late 70s. It was based upon a, the idea that people should be comfortable, have a comfortable shopping experience at their drug uh, So we chose this residential approach with furniture and furnishings and colorings that people would enjoy in their own. And we carried that through throughout. Well, you, I don't know if you've seen that contemporary novel, Exposure, where the heroine, who's actually a kleptomaniac, uh, loves Bergdorf. She says, I love everything about it. I love the moldings. I love the rugs, the chandelier. She also loves to steal stuff. And the, the novel opens with her making her, her runaway. She jumps in a cab. Listen, if we do the film, it's great. we want a clip from that. We do want a reading from that. I think <laughs> what what about the this book though? I it's don't... called Exposure. It's it's about a a woman, a young woman who's going through an emotionally disturbing period. Uh, but she really does this sort of, 
praise that this is her favorite story. I love story. it. I've sat, lived in Italy for the last five years, so I'm not. Yes, it just day, came out about a year and a half ago, oh, two I years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think a lot of other people, too, love the look of the interior. Mm -hmm. Love just sort of wandering around looking at things, mm -hmm. but it looks you know very glamorous, glamorously residential on each little detail. Yeah, but not all pudding. No, 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 quite the contrary. Not all pudding. Yeah. Well, I think you know this whole word comfortable. I think is, is important, particularly uh, at this time. Um, I think that's a part of the '90s also. That. Uh, Nothing is fake, you know, it has to be real, straightforward, comfortable, uh, and yet has to be uh, somewhat glamorous, um, has, it has to have appeal. I think <clears throat> the store is full of details. We are very detail-oriented uh, at Bergdorf's, and uh, I think as far as stores go, we're unique in that respect. Which of course is the the key for people who are really interested in aesthetics. That mm -hmm. the details are what makes it obvious. Sure. Yes. Um, I know you have more questions. I want you to go back for a minute to do more about visuals, especially the windows. Oh yeah. For example, uh -huh. um, um, what kind of an image uh, do you think the store is trying to project in the window? Well, we we try to um, show the. Uh, Primarily the designer, uh, the, the designer's project, as the designer would like to have it shown. What we consider ourselves as a showcase for uh, for design. Um, so we usually feature the uh, designer or the name, the brand. In consultation with the designers to have yes, it presented. Yes. John, were you here when they did the architectural windows? The windows with each other. Tell her a little bit about those windows because I thought maybe we should show those. Um, yes, I, I I had that idea of um, asking um, a group of architects to kind of work on the windows. And we assigned each architect a, a window, and we teamed the architect with the designer. So that, um, for example, Calvin Sow, Chow, I think you pronounce his name, was teamed with Jeffrey Bean. And um, Jeffrey had a window, and the designer did the background, and then the one dress that was chosen between the two of them was featured. And that was all around the store. And it was, and in fact, we should do that again. That, that was a, it was very complicated because the architects, of course, really got into it. And uh, they, <laughs> they created uh, some complicated situations for us, but we were able to execute them all. And the city uh, really responded to the windows. The city did, I think, uh, uh, liked those windows a lot, and they're often referred to, as mm -hmm. Stel says. But I think uh, what we'd like to do more of now is windows that appeal to the community in one way or another. Mm -hmm. We've done, we've planted flowers and trees in the windows on occasion. Unfortunately, the windows steamed up. <laughs> <laughs> Turned it into a <laughs> greenhouse. <laughs> yes, it was a greenhouse effect. Uh, so that wasn't one of the most successful ideas. Um, Silk flowers next time. <laughs> yeah. um, but the windows are, are, sh uh, are uh, very, very important vehicle in which we can let people know what we're about. And um, I, I am very, very window -prone. I am in the windows myself. I was in the windows last night. And um, uh, we have an extremely talented group of people who work in that. Area. I thought maybe she should talk to Carrier for a little bit because mm -hmm. he's had this great excitement about New York and uh, how he says he, he feels that that he gets his whole, uh, his, his juice comes from the city itself and mm -hmm. he gets out. And I think that that should project itself. Would mm -hmm. you like that? Sure, that's him? a good idea. Yes, I'm, I think. Mm -hmm. All right. Is, uh, Stephen has suggested that she walk around the store 
it, and he specifically wanted to go see the alteration department. What are the special places that she should be on the lookout for? Um, gosh, the, the, the store is just full of places that I don't know what would draw you. Um, well, it shouldn't be just me, but it should be, in fact, uh, like a, a collage, I think, of high points of the mm -hmm. store. Hmm. Um, well, to start at the bottom, um, Barry Kislestein Cord. Uh, we should add Barry uh, Kislestein Cord and Angela Cummings to yes. the American Design. Cord, yes. Yes. Oh, right. We gave, we had a show for. Uh, Very big. Uh, we should talk about the shows. A little more. Yes, that would be good. We started to talk about the shows and the one we. we <laughs> there are some really funny things. We did a show for uh, Claude Montana at one time. He was the first one when we began to stage extravagant shows. Right. And uh, it was at the Armory, and it was the first, the city had never seen a fashion show of this, uh, of this uh, size. And uh, Claude came, and it was a very exciting moment. And five minutes before the show was to start, we saw a man standing up on the runway, all dressed up in the evening dress, walking down the runway, and everyone rushed to, the music started, and uh, we all said, what's happening? It's not time yet. It was a transvestite who jumped up on the stage, walked down the And runway. jump-started the show. <laughs> <laughs> in a dress of his own make. <laughs> so much to Claude's oh. dismay. It never made the newspapers. It never made the newspapers. Oh, God, just, I don't wonderful. know why, but it never did. But um, <laughs> it was. Uh, then after that, we did a show for Giorgio Armani in the Rockefeller Center. Mm -hmm. We covered the skating rink. And, uh, and uh, Giorgio, it was his first appearance in America, and it was a very, very exciting time. And I, uh, <laughs> I remember Giorgio standing with his arms outstretched uh, this way at the end. He had never done a fashion show outside of Milan, and he was, um, uh, this was many, many years ago. You can imagine, it was long before his great success. Sorry? Uh, oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, what else was that? So Armani was, 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 was pleased with this beautiful New York. night yeah. uh, with his arms out, embracing the city as if to embrace the city. And um, then we did, um, well, we, we did a show for Fendi around the fountain here, uh, in front of the Plaza Hotel. Nice which was beautiful. And that was something. We were so naive at that time, we didn't consider that it could possibly rain. <laughs> and it wasn't tented. And so <laughs> we, uh, it was, a, the thunderstorms were threatening. And we literally prayed away that thunderstorm. And five minutes after the show finished, when everyone was in this, back in the store enjoying cocktails, the rain came down probably harder than <laughs> ever had ever in life. So that was a you know a great moment. Then we did a show for um, Christian Lacroix mm -hmm. in 1987. Oh yes, and that yes, was of course. on the eve of the, the stock market uh, crash, <laughs> and that was the held bubble. in the uh, yeah. <laughs> that was held in the. Um, at the trade trade center, trade center. down in the trade center, Battery Park, mm. and we can we had fireworks and um, uh, that was I think a major. And the Versace one was there. Uh, I wasn't here for that. Mm. That was down in Industria Super Studio. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, yeah. Make a note of course, that. Yeah. Yes, that's important. And we we also did a show for Christian Lacroix uh, for um, Jean Paul Gaultier. Where are you doing Westwood? Uh, pardon? Where will you do Westwood? I'm going to do it in the store. In the store? We want to, that isn't going to be an extravaganza because we want people to be able to see the clothes, the workmanship. Because you think that Vivian Westwood is a an upstart, you know, freaky designer. She's oh, no, they're magnificently made. Yes, the clothes are beautifully made and, 
and uh, her, the whole look is, it lends itself to being seen in a close way. So we're just going to, the fifth floor, all in designing the store, and we have talked about the various floors, we haven't really talked about it very much, the, um, all of the fixtures on that floor move away so that mm -hmm. you, you wind up with a big yes. office space. It could yeah. be a room so that it can be redesigned by just moving fixtures, reconfigurated. We are now working on a third floor and sixth floor. I don't know if Steve, did Steve tell you that? No, no. We're working on, um, we, the store is in, in a constant state of uh, redo. That's really what it what it is. Um, we're always expanding, uh, trying to capture more space from an operating point of view. Um, we uh, are going to have a, a floor. The sixth floor is going to be for executive women. That's a whole concept that we've developed for w women, working women who perhaps do not shop on the third or fourth floor. Um, probably, I like to think of it as middle management, mm -hmm. middle management floor. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, everything on it will be to make her life easier. And a lot of services will be added, possibly even to um, visit her in her office. So that that awesome. becomes a possibility. But we are, and, and perhaps Steve has told you this, that the store is just working always on improving service, that our customers, our, this, our um, salespeople are, are really, in the true sense, sales associates. They are very, very involved in what we carry, um, how we deal with the customer. And that's the it, programs in the store that um, we define that. Because that is crucial. I mm -hmm. when. Uh, a friend of mine still remembers years ago a saleswoman here when she's looking on the third floor saying, dear, don't you belong on the fifth floor? Yeah, she was right. so offended. She's she's just, right. <laughs> How much is giving you the award for being the store that makes the difference? What's the difference from your point of view? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You have to give me a little time to think about that. All right. I'll give you a little time. <laughs> But I wouldn't mind a top of the head. Uh, I don't know. You know, you come back, and you came back because whether it is the different store or whether it's going to be the different store, you know why. Well, um, I think it is a different store, um, but I there are just so many reasons why it's different. It's hard to put it into one. I, I would like to think about it. All right, then you'll give us that another time. Uh -huh. Can I ask you quick before you go? Did you reach Calvin? No, he's going to call me back. Oh, good. Okay. Calvin, all right. Yeah, and, and I'm having dinner with him and Calvin in the next. All right.